How's it going, everybody? My name is Nick Frio, and welcome to a brand new episode of Almost Live. Today, we're switching gears a bit, and we're featuring a spoken word artist who's well-known in the Monterey Bay area. Please welcome Chris Justice. From burning ashes to floating dust. I used to think that the pigment, the skin, the dark rust off of confidence, and my anonymous iris was some powerful tyrants. Who tied time to my eyes sees the bluest eye, proceed to deal on the lights, make me brown child and identify. Hi, my name is Shaker underneath the possible statement, your lips concealed in your throat. It's nothing personal, my thoughts just tend to leak out from a crack of my skull. Nobody knows of the boat screwed in with the teens and beatings that follow street regimes to the present haunted dreams. We're in from an eerie apparition, speaking with intimidating cadence, hidden in angst. Because Cause all we want is a diamond in the back, some rooftop, digging in the scene with a gangster lean, a diamond in the back, some rooftop, digging in the scene with a gangster lean, see, that don't mean nothing to us, we lose people on a regular basis, turn around then, pledge allegiance to corporate business that own our spirits and hit the switch. I'm just a black man writing scripts, maneuvered through oppressive beasts as they pivot, obtaining distinctive blood dripping for future kids on concrete imprints. To decipher what would suffer for innocence and fragmented purposes. I never understood what my worth is compared to skyscraper buildings. A moon gleaming past the sky's limit on silver linings between heavens. That tug the prism of religions, tug feelings in the world of my eternal canvas. The push pins drawn out the normalcy, while my heart glitters on the masterpiece to be displayed in your third eye to see. Just blink, by the by the only stars I see no iridescent laces, hanging off a of wire to communicate with the shining remnants of spirits in prison on schoolyards that try to find out what makes us starve and our twisted minds recognize what forced characters in the narrative we all share convince the authors that we heroes and others to spare to destroy the depths of the devious that derail demons people deal with I'm deemed deranged because I need to get insane to stay sane these days when God reigns the complexity of brains exquisite consensual sex saving it for the person I love that hasn't come yet in my adolescence, my older cousin tried to get me to buy him a box of Trojans. Back into make commotions, every moment to provoke arousal and fantasize hormones. Find gold to excavate rainbows with the rabbit hole with captivating images and attempt to grasp force fiends that don't exist while I continue to sleep lucid and drift to my conscience ashamed to say that I'm a virgin. I. Harvest erotic androgynous feelings out of fear as someone to condemn my identity as a myth in the midst of frivolous speeches pertaining to birds and semen. I cringe at the thought of intimacy because I felt creating a loving nest was only tangible in my dreams. Where the walls talk with drip of saliva, ideas start to ride over the flesh I desire in private. An intense experimental crisis arrives in my curious mind, imagining my body synchronized with the dominatrix. Anxiously awaiting tender whips, handcuffed against our language laced with warmth, connected more than just our genitals. Where my dactyls are caught your goosebumps that blossom hundreds of dopamine explosions during coitus. A prolex process of commands on an uncomfortable access, go diagonal to kiss the lips that holds my happiness, locking my mental attachment. Kinder lit dim silhouettes caress our delicate spirits as we climax underneath you sheets. I value the secrets your body carries. A gleaming glacier of fishnets the neighbors just can't simply experience the universe you projected at a distance. Spirits have to intertwine with an overwhelming sense of bliss as the vulnerable aroma stimulates a sinking crypt. Where the cracks of your smile is the only way I can obtain oxygen. I admire the way the intimate steps on the curves you once wept with lavish smooth mocha melanin that persifies the butterflies inside our cocoons for amusement that proves my awkwardness since I was a kid. See, there's a stigma on me as a black man from the inner city trying to become its richest Batman by any means after getting tired of waiting on Superman to teach. He flew away when I went on a violent rampage calling my 8th grade female classmate a bitch. I'm pretty sure that's what another girl felt like when I guilt tripped her into infatuations. Not even two strong male world models can save me because when I got to college I heard a few more women unintentionally. My silence is a luxury as an inevitable participant in patriarchy. So I carve out the blueprint of my flesh for young men to dissect an old fucked up thought process to maneuver through the norms and change the way we view sex and ultimately respect women. I realized we're in prison to our own ignorance when I heard a guy talking about getting a girl drunk to become more intimate. Conscious decisions with no education as men we emasculate each other for waiting. I was 19 when I heard my first kiss. It was under a moonlit bridge at the edge of the ocean. It was more than just a wave. For me, it'll be that much more special to wait when I'm ready. 
not to rush temptations, but to cherish the birth of love. So I'm here with Chris Justice from Los Angeles, California, as well as Monterey Bay Area. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing good. How you good, doing? Good to have you on the show again. Yeah. Are, this is your second time, actually. You're part of Shadows of Society. Yes, sir. So um, I just kind of want to know the history of, of you and spoken word. Kind of like where, when was the moment when you, you know, you kind of realized, I like doing this and I'm, I'm good at doing this? Um, it wasn't, it was more so like I want to spread a message of like education, pretty mm -hmm. much. I want the youth to educate themselves on like what's around them and be more open minded on the different things that's out there. Mm -hmm. So actually when I first started, I started in the 11th grade and it was through the influence of my writing mentor, Mike the Poet. He's a famous LA writer um, and he also do like uh, city tours and mm -hmm. different things with architecture and different things of that nature. So um, yeah, through, through his influence, I kind of uh, read up on gang violence and different things like that since it was something I, I experienced uh -huh. uh, when I was younger. I actually got robbed when I was 12 years old from walking down the damn street. Wow. And it was by three men and one of them act like they had a gun in their pants. So like experiencing that and understanding the culture uh, that's in LA, uh, I try to write more pieces that's geared towards social justice. Mm -hmm. And um, at lunchtime, he would do these poetry lounge, uh, poetry lounge stuff. So it's like an open mic. Mm -hmm. And I would do my pieces there. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it. But that's how I got the name Chris Justice yeah. because okay. that. And um, it just kind of started from there. And then I actually wanted to give up when I got out here. I came out here as a music major. Yeah. And then um, my friend Chris Barhona, told, um, he's DJ Archive. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, of Shadows of Society, he told me to go up and give the open mic a shot, and I did it, and I fell in love with it, and I fell out of love <laughs> with it because I, I got invited to a radio the radio station on campus, uh -huh. and uh, this guy wanted me to perform, and then he said I sound like a depressed teenager <laughs> right on air, <laughs> and I was like, you know what, forget this, <laughs> and then I tried again, uh -huh. and then when I did it again something just happened and uh people said that they feel touched uh that i touched on like certain subject matters and pertaining to like drug drug usage mm -hmm. i don't i don't use drugs i don't smoke weed or anything mm -hmm. i don't even drink and that's on some other stuff but um <laughs> uh, but yeah like just covering different things that relate to people uh, -huh. uh people really appreciate honesty and that's something that i realized uh, through my journey with this so with this poetry thing, it's more so just like making connections mm -hmm. and not really like money or skill or different things of that nature. So, Okay. That's, that's a great answer. <laughs> it was a long answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what do you have in your hand right now? This is my very first book. Um, took me six to seven years to write this book. Wow. I actually started right when I started writing poetry. Okay. Uh, the title is Born in the World Of. Again, it kind of stemmed from like being in LA and like just being born in the middle of like a war pretty much. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, the, the book kind of details how these different systems of oppression affect us on an individual level. Mm -hmm. And based upon our different beliefs, we criminalize each other. And uh, what you get my perspective on how the world is with these different systems through poetry. And I interview eight to nine different CSUMB students of different identities, of different religious backgrounds, different sexual orientations, gender identities, ethnicities. And um, they just speak their truth on how they see life. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just a way for people to get a glimpse uh -huh. of like what's out there. Of course, like they can't speak like, you know, entirely on their community because like, you know, that's just one lived experience. Everyone has different different yeah, experiences. Of course, yeah. So um 
this book, I want it to be a gateway for other people to go out and do research. Like, oh, this is interesting. Let me go to out and actually. It. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Where where can people find it? You can find this on Amazon for $14.99. <laughs> um, they actually, when they first went on sale uh, February 21st, um, it was selling at the CH1B bookstore awesome. and it sold out within the first week. <laughs> <laughs> and there like, since then, people have been like, Oh, like I want to get a copy, and I'm like, I gotta rest restock. That's them. it's a good feeling, so though, that it, you gotta restock. <laughs> it's a really good feeling, but it's yeah. a pain in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that bet, yeah. But also, um, 45 percent of the proceeds are going to Youth Now in Watsonville. It's an after school program that focuses on uh, creative writing and the arts and different things of that nature. Oh wow! Uh, and so far, we raised over five hundred dollars. Nice for them and. Yeah, it's just a good feeling to give back to the community and, you know, do it through art. Yeah. I'm sorry. What more can I say standing at your grave with a bouquet of yellow roses? I was trapped in hypnosis, surrounded by unknown voices, attempting to rejoice with the joys, feeling of compassion, but... When I saw you laying in that casket, I had an indescribable emotion. At that moment, I lost sight of what was most important when you ripped my ribcage open and took what was mine. I went to revenge, but I didn't realize the result would be us dying. I still see your spirit floating on, shining through the darkness at your wake, find it hard to come to grips with the mistake I made, letting all the memories fade away into the abyss. And my sacrilegious world in which I reside, you no longer exist. This bell tolls for the ghost of the woman I love, may she rest. Here's to your departure. God bless. Here's to your departure. God bless. This bell tolls for the ghost of the woman I love. May she rest. In my sacrilegious world in which I reside, you no longer exist. Letting all the memories fade away into the abyss. Find it hard to come to grips with the mistake I made. I still see your spirit floating on, shining at your wake. I went in revenge, but I didn't realize the result would be us dying when you ripped my ribcage open and took what was mine. At that moment, I lost sight of what was most important. When I saw you laying in that casket, I had an indescribable emotion. Attempting to rejoice with the joyous feeling of compassion. I was trapped in hypnosis, surrounded by unknown voices, standing at your grave with a bouquet of yellow roses. I'm sorry. What more can I say? I joined the dark side for two cookies and a pack of Reese's. Never about my head when the family prays to Jesus while thoughts rest in scattered pieces as poetry eats my grief. Then Greek junk and tears with concealed brainstorms that echo through bones to create a small hole where you can see my heart beat and stop when police pull me over assuming that I'm a sex offending low like dope fiend who bangs rolling 60s praying on the weak. Getting teased with government cheese as a social experiment. Living in a Nickerson project because the cop's son couldn't get out of bed when school started. I don't know how to keep shit simple. So I watch stars collide on a daily basis, aligned with headaches and a mind of Kylo Ren like temptations. Adjacent to Finn waking up killing its innocents with two, three finger blood imprints, the only difference is white ripple my skin. What's in store for the future? For the future, um, my dream is honestly, like I kind of just said <laughs> already, but uh, is to perform and travel. Mm -hmm. uh, make connections like that. It's not even about the money. It's not about anything. It's just, just bringing I want awareness. Bringing awareness, make connections with people. Uh, as far as like like the near future, I have a book release in L.A. at Beyond Baroque. It's one of the very first uh, poetry venues in L.A. I believe. Oh. And uh, yeah, they're allowing me to sell my book there and <laughs> actually have a release party. And it's 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 just an amazing feeling. That would yeah. be yeah. So, yeah, just that. I have a bunch of different collaborations going on with different musicians. SOS is working on a new album. Plug in. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so. Well, different things. Happening. Chris, it was a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Once again, that was Chris Justice from Los Angeles, California. And you can find his book, Born in the World of, on Amazon. This is Nick Frio saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you right back here at Almost Live. <laughs>